Hi, it's Tom here and welcome to another Gradle best practice tip. And if you're used to using tab completion with commands in the bash terminal, then I've got good news for you because in Gradle we've got something similar. It's called Gradle completion and it works for task names. And this is another productivity tip following on from the video about abbreviated names. And it's going to help save you time when interacting with Gradle on the command line. So let's get right into it. And here's the GitHub page for the tool. It's actually part of the official Gradle project. And if we scroll down here, we can see that this provides fast tab completion for Gradle tasks for current projects and sub-projects, CLI switches, and common Gradle properties. And I'll provide a link to this in the description because it does contain full setup instructions, which might be different depending on your environment. Now, I'm working in an Ubuntu environment here, and I need to do two things. One is to download the script, and the second one is to source that script from my bash RC file. And the first thing I'm going to do here is create a directory in my home directory, bash underscore completion dot D. And then I'm going to run this curl command, which will download the file into that directory. And lastly here, I just need to add this snippet of code, which sources that file to the end of my in my home directory dot bash rc file and using the double arrows adds it to the end. And I'm just going to open a new terminal here to start a new bash session with Gradle completion initialized and I'm going to navigate into this project directory. So right now we're inside this completion demo Java Gradle project. It's got the Java plugin applied and we're going to try out Gradle completion with some of the tasks made available by the Java plugin. So let's run dot slash Gradle W and say I want to just compile the classes, then that's the classes task. So I'm going to type CL and then tab. And then you can see it's building the completion cache. And if I hit tab again, I've got the different options. So that could be classes or clean. I want to run classes. So I'm just going to be specific with A and then hit tab again, and there we go. It's as simple as that. You use tab in the same way that you would use tab for autocomplete with a bash terminal. So let's just try that once more, dot slash grade of W. I want to run tests this time, TE, tab, and then that completes with test. So the other feature that this has is the completion of command line switches. So for example, if we did dot slash grade W, and then dash dash I. So this is what command line switches start with I. Let's hit tab, I N, hit tab again. And we've got all these options, include build, info, and init script. So let's say I wanted to run with the info level debug, and I just type F then tab, and there we go. And the last thing to show here is how this works with Gradle properties. So let's say I want to run dot slash Gradle W assemble and I want to run it with a dash D org dot Gradle and I'm not really sure what properties are available here so I'm going to hit tab once, twice, three times and here we go. These are all the properties that I could use and this time I'm going to set the console. So CO tab equals and I'm going to set that to plain. So rather than a colorful console, I want to have a plain console. And there we go. So you've just seen there three ways that you might benefit from this Gradle completion tool. You can use it for task names, you can use it for command line switches like dash dash info, and also for Gradle properties like dash d org.gradle, any of those types of properties. So why not try this out with your own project and see if it increases your productivity? And speaking of productivity, I strongly believe that having a basic understanding of the fundamentals of Gradle really helps you to be as efficient as possible when working with your Gradle project. So why not check out my introductory Gradle course? It's free. It's called Get Going with Gradle, and you can find the link right here. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next Gradle best practice tip.